Hey everybody, I have Anna over here who has picked out a fabulous pattern, the Remy bag, and we together are going to show you guys how to put it all together. All right, friends, so if you are here to sew the Remy bag, your pattern will need to look like this. This is the front of your envelope. The title is the Remy bag. The pattern number is actually 8674. That's how you would find it at a fabric store. We also have some information on here that talks about the level of sewing this is appropriate for. So with this is a beginner pattern. We expect you really not to have very much experience using a sewing machine. It's going to be our job to teach you today. This is also a recommendation of ages eight plus. And if you are younger, then we really recommend you working with a parent, um, even though we recommend an adult working with anyone um, on this project just to help you understand all the directions. Included in this package, all your um, materials are listed on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip it over to the back of envelope. I'm gonna lift that up. So we're of course congratulating you guys on taking the sewing journey with us. And down here you'll notice that the supplies are all listed. Use the check boxes to make sure you have everything. And we're gonna do that right now. So Anna, I'm gonna have you check off our boxes for all the supplies to make sure we have everything so that we're ready to sew. All right, so Anna, do we have most of our materials? Mm-hmm. Fabulous. All right, so we have fully gone over our information on the envelope. Let's go ahead and take a peek inside. So I'm gonna have you do the honors. You're going to reach in, and we're gonna pull out all the papers on the inside. And you will notice there are two types of papers on the inside. These brown sheets that are kind of flimsy, those are your pattern tissue. This is your pattern tissue. And this is actually gonna have all your pattern pieces on them. So we're gonna put this off to the side for a moment. The other set of sheets that you'll find in here are a little heavier, so they feel a little sturdier. And these are your guide sheets. And these are gonna be your instructions that will tell us exactly what we need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our guide sheets first, all right? Okay. Great. So what's gonna be important is to understand how these guide sheets actually work. The first page of our guide sheets is, is not numbered. So what you will see, you'll have practice sheets on here, you have pivot lines, and you have straight lines. You also have a diagram of the sewing machine parts and a diagram of threading your sewing machine. So these are pictures and practice sheets that we're going to be using in just a moment. And I'll also note that the back side is blank because we're actually going to be using these sheets. So we're going to put this off to the side, and you just need to remember that this is sheet number one and two. Okay? Once we're done with this, we're going to go ahead and find our next sheet. I'm going to flip this over. This sheet, you'll notice a whole lot of writing. These are your actual instructions. In the top right-hand corner here, you'll find three slash six. And what that is telling us is that this is page three of six. And the way you find page four is you need to flip it over. So there's our four of six. And then you can imagine we need to find our five of six, right? Five of six is gonna be over here, right at the top. Mm -hmm. And we're going to... Six of six. Yeah, six of six, okay? So the two sheets, three through six, are gonna be the most important ones with all your instructions that you're, gonna want, you're going to want to keep together, okay? All right, we're back on page three where it all begins. So right here, let's get started. We got our starting flag telling us we're ready to go. We're also really proud that you guys have picked to choose this pattern, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about how to use this pattern. So what we find works best is to read the instructions, watch the video, and then do the step. All in that order. All right? Some helpful things to know about this pattern is also how to read it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find terms in bold. The bolded words are gonna be important to make sure you understand what needs to happen with your pattern. You'll also see a thinking emoji after the word in bold, and we're gonna define that word so you can understand what it means. We also are offering an online support. So if you have any questions that are not being answered 
Through these instructions and our video, you can email us at support at thehandworkstudio.com and we'll try to help you. All right, we also have already done this, but it's always good to make sure that when you get your space ready that you still have all your supplies and make sure you check your list. The other piece that some people don't really think about is your space needs to be ready too. So we have our nice flat tabletop surface, but if you don't necessarily have a tabletop surface, that shouldn't stop you from sewing. You can easily use a floor as long as it's clutter free. Okay? All right, and then we highly recommend that you go ahead and practice your sewing with our practice sewing sheets before you get started. It's kind of like a warm up. Mm -hmm. No one starts running the mile without a stretch, right? <laughs> So go ahead and use those practice sheets just to make sure you're feeling good. And then if any other questions or you want to find out some more information about our sewing patterns, you can go to simplicity.com slash the handwork studio and we'll have lots of informational videos on there as well. Okay. All right, Anna, we got to talk about something important as well. Not that everything is actually pretty important, but this is the most important because this is about safety. And we want to make sure that when you are sewing that you understand how to be safe with all the tools you're going to be using. So over here we have a couple of items that we want to point out. Haha, <laughs> get it? Point. <laughs> um, to make sure that you guys understand what you're going to be using and why you need to be safe with it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is keeping our shoes on at all times. Why would we tell you guys to keep your shoes on? Um, so you don't step on pins and needles? That is a fabulous answer and that really is the reason why we tell you to keep shoes on. You wouldn't believe how many times you drop a pin and you might accidentally step on it. So we recommend leaving your shoes on. The other things that might be sharp that we'd be using other than pins could be... Needles and scissors. Definitely. Needles and scissors. So. Also making sure you always know where your pins, needles, and scissors are located so you don't accidentally sit on anything or somebody walks into something that they didn't mean to. So please be aware of your surroundings and keeping your pins, needles, and scissors together. We also talked about having one of these guys when we're sewing. Why do we need to be careful with the iron? So you don't burn your hand? You really do not want to burn your hands or really anything else. So um, the bottom plate of our iron is what gets hot. Many of you might already know that, but you always want to make sure your iron is not facing down. You want to make sure your hand's going to stay away from the hot plate. And also, a lot of people don't realize the cords can be really dangerous too, just because you don't want to trip and fall and knock things over and accidentally, you know, get anyone burned. So those are some really key things that we want to talk about of being safe. We also recommend never sewing in a rush. Nothing ever good comes out of sewing in a rush or doing anything in a rush. And rushing often will lead to mistakes. So we want to make sure it's not an unsafe mistake. All right. So I think with that all being said, if you're paying attention and taking your time, you guys are going to be doing great. All right, Anna, we're heading into step two. We're going to learn about our pattern. So that means we're going to go ahead and take our pattern tissue mm -hmm. and unfold it. Okay. Once we unfold it, there's no going back. <laughs> okay. Just want you to understand. Okay. It's going to get large and in charge over here. All right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to have you go ahead and start to unfold it. And you will feel as you are starting to unfold your pattern tissue at home, it's really delicate. It, it's tissue. It's like tissue paper. So you have to do it slowly, just like that. Excellent. Sometimes if you need to turn it to keep it on your surface, if your table is not as long or as wide. And we're going to find the end. And we're going to flip it so we see the dark outlines facing up. So we want to see the dark outlines. So I'm just going to pull oh, this way. Okay. <laughs> I'm not joking, large and in charge here, right? Yep. Okay, Anna, we have laid out our pattern tissue so we can see all of our shapes. You'll notice that there are three different shapes marked on our tissue. Yep. Number one is our outer bag, which says cut two. Number two is our 
lining bag. How many do, do we cut? Two. Exactly. And number three? Is the strap. Exactly. And the strap is actually just going to be one cut because you'll see some symbols on here that's going to tell us why it's one cut. And if you come over to this section, this talks about some of the symbols you see on your patterns. Mm -hmm like these arrows and these little triangles and lines and they're going to help to tell us what we need to think about when we're using our pattern tissue which we'll talk about in just a few. Alright, so now we're going to get ready for our next step. Okay, Anna, now that we figured out all of our pieces that we need for our Remy bag and it matches up with our picture here on our guide sheet, we are going to get ready to cut the pattern out of the tissue, okay? okay? And the first thing I just want to mention before we cut is that you will see these dark outlines and those, if you match up over here with your symbol, is a cutting line, okay? So that's going to tell us exactly where we want to cut. We don't want to cut on these little dashed lines. We'll explain what those are later. We're going to cut around those dark outlines and we're going to cut all three pieces out. Alright, you ready okay. to do that with me? Yeah. Excellent. All right. So we're going to take our cutting scissors here, and sometimes if you're having trouble because the pattern tissue tends to be really large, I might just go ahead and take off most of the pattern tissue to make it a little easier. I'm just going to do a really big wide cut, really fast, not trying to be precise at all. And we're going to take that and move it off the table, that way it's a little easier to work in our space that we have here, okay? So you go ahead and can continue cutting and we're gonna make sure we have our three pieces, okay? All right, Anna, we are on step four and we're ready to now lay out our fabric. So we have our outer bag fabric mm -hmm. right here on the table, which is going to be the outside of our bag. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is first check to make sure this is not a one-way print. And we already discussed that in learning about your fabric. And you can see that our lightweight denim does not have a print. So it's not really going to matter which direction this is going to go, other than making sure it goes with the green line, okay? Which we did discuss before as well. So to make sure things are with the grain line, we have our selvage right here at the very top. We also have our fold right here at the very bottom. So the fold is going to mean we're going to have two sides to our fabric. So if you kind of pull it back a little bit, you will notice that there is a definite inside to our fabric. So that is our wrong side of our fabric. And this top is the right side of our fabric, and we want to make sure we are going to have the right side of the fabric facing up, which we do. All right, so we are now going to get ready to put our pattern piece, our outer bag pattern piece, onto this fabric, and our strap piece onto this fabric. So why don't we go ahead and find those two pieces, and we'll get ready to do that. All right, step five, pin your pattern tissue to your fabric. So we have our outer bag fabric and Anna has already grabbed the strap pattern piece and we're going to take a look at it in a little closer detail. So not a whole lot going on on here other than telling us what number it is and the name of it but if you come down to the bottom of our strap you'll see it says center fold. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure the edge of this strap piece goes onto the fold of the fabric. So Anna, does that look right? No. It doesn't. Okay. Can you show us where you think the fold of the fabric is. Exactly, exactly. So the fold is gonna be at the bottom. And the reason why we have it on the fold is so that when we cut, we're not gonna cut the fold. And so when we unpin the pattern tissue, you're gonna get a long piece of fabric. So it's really less cutting and less sewing that we have to do. So Anna, the first thing we need to do with the strap to get it ready to pin is bring it over to the left-hand side of our fabric. Just makes it a little easier when we're gonna get ready to cut and line it right up onto the fold. I always recommend giving yourself a little bit of space if you have the luxury of just not, don't put it all the way on the edge. Just bring it in a little bit. Just make sure you're gonna capture both layers of your fabric. All right, Anna, great job lining that up right on the edge. And we're gonna go ahead and take our outer bag fabric and we are gonna bring that onto our fabric right here. 
and you notice there's an arrow on here now, right? Mm -hmm. The arrow, if you remember, was discussed when we were learning about our pattern, and this needs to go with the grain line. And the grain line means we have our selvage at the top, so all of our threads are going in this direction. So we want our grain, our straight grain line arrow to also go in that direction. So we're going to just turn it to the side. The strap did not have that. It just told us that it needed to go on the fold. So we are okay. We're going to just bring it kind of close to the strap, but just not on the fold because this time we need to make two separate pieces. And now that we have our two pieces on our outer bag fabric, we are going to get ready to pin it onto the fabric so it doesn't fly around. All right. So I like to sometimes put the pin cushion onto the pattern tissue since it is pretty lightweight. It has a tendency, like a little gust of wind can send it flying. So this might help hold it down if you want to take a pair of scissors. That might help hold it down. And I'm going to take the pins out of our pin cushion. And we're going to go ahead and pin all the way around our edges through both layers of fabric. So you have to push it down. And I like to kind of just push my finger right in front if I can't do a good pinch with it and get that into the fabric. And you'll see that we have the pin sticking through the other side. So we know it's well pinned down. We're gonna go ahead and do another pin, maybe right in the middle. I sometimes use my hand to gauge where I need to put the pin, but if you feel like you need an extra pin in there, that's fine. It's just giving you an estimate. You don't need a thousand pins right next to each other. So we're gonna go ahead and just stick another pin right there. And our pins are going parallel, that word again, to our cut edge. I'm going to go ahead and pin all the way around. And Anna, I'm going to have you work on the strap. Okay. okay. All right, Anna, nice job pinning the outer bag and the strap pieces to your fabric. Mm -hmm. so we're going to put this to the side for a moment because we don't want to forget about our lining fabrics. All right, so here's our lining fabric, and if we need a, if it's sometimes your space is a little tight, and since you have everything pinned down, you can always just give it a little fold. Don't crumple it up or anything, but just give it a little fold and put it off to the side so it doesn't get in your way. I'm going to have you unfold this guy, but we're going to still keep that fold, okay, at the bottom. And our lining looks very similar to our outer bag fabric, just a nice pink color. And you'll find our selvage at the top, our cut edges down the side, and our fold at the bottom. Okay? This time we're just going to take our lining bag piece. All right, we're going to bring it actually down here to our left hand side. But you have to remember, we have our arrow on here. And does that look like it's going the right way? No. It does not. So we're going to go ahead and just tilt it so that our arrow is parallel with that selvage. And what do you think we're going to do? We're going to pin it down. Pin this baby down. All right. We're going to go ahead and push it in. All right. Now that we have everything pinned, we can move on to our next step. Mm -hmm. All right, Anna. We are on step six. Cut your fabric. And just like I said, we're going to cut <laughs> your fabric. So to cut some fabric, what do we need? Scissors. We need our scissors. We're also going to need a pen. I'm going to explain that in just a moment, why we might need a pen before we cut. <laughs> Hang tight. <laughs> Are there any funny symbols that you might find on your pattern tissue? The triangles. There are triangles. They look like little nachos, if you will also known as notches. <laughs> and the notches are there to show you for placement purposes, much like a puzzle, how pieces are going to need to match up. So I'm gonna have us take the pen. I like to do this on your fabric, you don't have to, but it just helps to make you very mindful of when to cut this out. And we're going to make another little triangle sticking out so it almost looks like a diamond, okay? And that's how we're going to cut out that notch shape. Okay? So we have our two notches. Is there anything else we should be considering? No. Okay. All right. Then I think we can officially make the cut into our fabric. Once you cut, then you have to sew it all back together to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to go ahead and we can cut into our fabric. You just have to remember on our strap, we are not going to cut the 
remember what it is? What aren't we gonna cut? The fold. The fold, exactly. All right. All right, so I got to my first notch here. So I just want everyone to just take a moment. So I stopped right where I made the triangle. I'm gonna bring my scissors out and then back in. If you need to change the angle of your body, sometimes it's hard to, you know, maneuver your hands that way. But you will see I made this little triangle point. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just to give you the idea that you need to match those pieces up, okay? Let Anna finish cutting out her strap. All right, Anna, nice job. We did cut out our strap and our outer bag. You can see our notches on the side. Our fold is still there. So we are ready to put these off to the side. Leave your pattern tissue attached to your fabric. Don't unpin anything yet. You don't want to get confused, okay? Put that off to the side. We're going to go ahead and get our lining. Okay, Anna, we grabbed our lining fabric and we're going to go ahead and find our... Notches. You got it. We're going to make our marks just like we did in the other one. I think everything else has been sort of noted. We will talk about these little dots later. They will not affect the cutting, okay? So we're going to go ahead and give this a good... get to our notch again. Go ahead and pull it out and back in. So you should have technically five pieces of fabric now. You're gonna have one strap piece. If you look at your pinned outer bag piece, there will be two separate pieces now. And your lining bag fabric, how many? Two. Two, exactly. So two, four, one. five right? Yeah. <laughs> but that is one piece right yes. there. So it was just getting a total count on all of our pieces of fabric. Okay. If you have your five pieces, then you're ready to move on to the next step. Anna, we are on step seven. Set up your sewing machine. Mm -hmm. We have finally taken our sewing machine out. We are going to get it ready for us to put our fabric pieces together. You will see that I already have the thread in here. So if you are having any trouble threading up your machine, I suggest you can go back to some of our video earlier that talks about threading your machine from our diagram, or you can look at your machine sewing manual or look your model up online if you don't have a manual. So we have set our machine up. I'm using red thread. The reason why I'm using red thread, even though a lot of our fabric is not red, is so that you guys can see the sewing that we are doing here today. Most of you are probably going to pick thread that's pretty close to your fabric color, and that's fine. It's really a personal preference. So the other part of what we need to do with getting our machine ready is making sure it's on the right stitch functions, okay? So this machine has a dial on the front that has some numbers on it, and we're going to make sure it's set to 2.5, and that's the stitch length of um, our stitches that we're going to be making. So you can see we don't really have a 2 0.5 number, but we have a two and a three. So we're gonna go right between the two and the three. So we just turn it. That little line is going to tell me that I'm set right between the two and the three. And my length is all good. Now I'm gonna come over to my stitch selector. I have a menu over here on the right side of my machine. Again, every machine's a little different. So if your menu's not there, it might be a pie, just make sure you refer to it and make sure you're on your straight stitch. So I'm gonna come over here. Right now I'm on the letter B, so that is not correct. I'm gonna to go to the letter A and all that's gonna do is move my needle to the center position. So we're gonna do a straight stitch with preferably your needle in the center position. After your stitches are all set, I always like to take a piece of scrap fabric. So we have some leftover of the lightweight denim or really whatever you wanna try out. We're gonna place it underneath our presser foot. We're gonna put down our presser foot lever. We're going to turn our sewing machine on, making sure my foot pedal's in the right place. And I'm gonna go ahead and check to make sure my machine is working. Everything sounds pretty good. If you hear like a clunking, 
That means you probably want to stop sewing and check and see what's going on. If your threads look funny or loopy, you also want to make sure you stop sewing and check what's going on. So let's go ahead and take a peek, see how we're doing. All right. Mm -hmm. Looks like our stitches are pretty solid over here. So our machine is well set up. It just saves us some time. If your stitches do not look right when you sew on your bag, you might have to go back and seam rip. And if you can save a trip to seam ripping town, you're in a good spot. All right? So now we're going to talk about seam allowance. This is going to be important to make sure your bag ends up the correct size. So we have our painter's tape over here, and I'm going to have you grab, um, rip off a piece of that, maybe about three inches or so, give or take. Not, not too big, not too small. We're going to come over here. You can see on the plate on our machine has some numbers. And we mentioned before when we were going through our sewing machine parts that this is our sewing guide. This is going to tell us how far over we need to be when we need to sew. And it's basically a ruler. So we're going to find the half inch line. You can see my pin pointing that out over here. And we're going to take our piece of tape and we're going to place it on that half inch line. That way we have a really big blue piece of tape to tell us where our fabric needs to be. So Anna, I'm going to have you hand that to me. I'm going to line it up. Press it down. Make sure it doesn't squiggle around on me. Again, painter's tape is really nice to use because it doesn't leave the stickiness. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to make, use our seam allowance. I'm going to cut off a piece of scrap here again. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the edge of our fabric over here and we're going to line it up against the edge of our piece of tape. And what that's going to do is allow us to stay with a half inch seam allowance. So if I sew from this point at the top all the way to the bottom, following my edge of my tape, we're in a good spot. If we start sewing like this, do you think we're sewing a half inch seam allowance? No. We are no longer sewing a half inch seam allowance and that could be a problem. So what I like to tell everybody when they begin to sew, when you put down your presser foot, you're really watching the edge of the fabric to your seam guide. So I'm gonna really make sure I connect these two sides together I'm going to go ahead and give it a try, make sure my machine's on. I'm going to come forward, I'm going to just do a quick back stitch, just for good measure. And here we are, following it straight down, back stitch, coming off, give that a snip. And you can see this, the line from our seam to the edge of the fabric is pretty even and it's about a half inch in length. All right, so that's how you're going to use your seam allowance when you sew. Great. Step eight, labeling your fabric pieces. Anna has brought back our outer bag, our lining bag, and our strap. And if you listened, you kept your pattern tissue connected to your fabric. But now we're going to get ready to actually remove the pattern tissue because I don't think you want your bag with a bunch of pattern tissue attached to it. So I'm going to have Anna over here rip off five pieces of tape. And you might be able to guess that it's going to go on the five pieces of fabric that we have. So about three inches in length, Anna. So we're going to make it kind of long. So maybe about this long. Okay, that's a little more. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. And it doesn't need to be exact. You just want to have enough space for you to write the name. We're going to label your bags with the tape, okay? I'm going to do that. And while Anna is doing that, I am only going to focus on our outer bag and our strap pieces, okay? And I'm going to take the pins out. Great. So why don't we go ahead and take one piece and attach it right on here. And I'm going to have you write outer bag on this strap, okay? So we're going to take our pen and label it. While Anna's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and take out. Great. And then I'm going to have you flip it over. And we're gonna do it, yep, right there. And I'm gonna have you look at that. So no, there, you're gonna label it outer bag, okay? And we are now ready to label our strap. And if you remember the fold, watch what's gonna happen. Ta da! <laughs> A nice long strap, right? So we can use it 
to wear our bag. You go ahead, one piece of tape, and you're just going to write strap on there. I don't know where the pen is. You have it. <laughs> Great. Put that over there. And our lining bag. Now, our lining bag has something different than what our outer bag had. They have these two dots at the bottom. The dots are there to help us to mark where we're going to start and stop sewing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pen, I'm going to borrow it from Mom and Anna, and we're going to just push the pen through, all the way through the paper. So sometimes it's nice when the tissue paper is pretty flimsy. We are going to just gently make a blue dot right onto the fabric so we have it marked to know when we need to start and stop sewing. So if I take the pin out, do you see the blue dot there? Yep. Great. So we know where they are. We're going to go ahead and unpin this. So what I'm also going to do is, we, if you'd like, you can flip this over to the other side and you can do the dots on the other side if you'd like, if that just helps you. And Anna, what do you think we're going to do? Put the tape on it. We're going to put some tape on it and we're going to call this the lining bag, okay? So you just have to write lining bag on there. Great, excellent. So everything's now labeled up and we're ready to head on to our next step. Step nine, get ready to sew. We have our bags labeled. Anna, you did a great job. And now we're gonna take our outer bag pieces and we're going to pin them together the way we need to sew them, okay? okay? So grab some pins and our outer bag piece right here. The first thing we need to do is make a decision to see what is our right side and what is our wrong side. So this fabric will show us that the wrong side is a little lighter than our outer side, or the right side of our fabric here. So we're gonna put right sides together. We're gonna separate this. Here's our right side over here. They like to look at one another. So I'm gonna have you put that back on the table. And we're going to have them just place one on top of the other and match up our notches, okay? And we're gonna pin these guys together. The way I like to pin these and so they're gonna go like perpendicular, if you will. They're gonna go out from the edge of your fabric. So I like to pinch the fabric and push it through. And you'll see my pin is now facing out. Okay, so the plastic ball head is, is on the edge of the, the cut edge of the fabric. And again, we wanna use about a hand span worth of space. We're gonna go ahead and Pin it all the way around. About two on each side should be fine. You have to remember, since we are making a bag, we are not going to pin the top. Can you think of why you would not want to pin the top of the bag? So there's a hole? You do. You need to have some place to put your things in your bag. You don't need a big giant square. So we're going to leave that open because we are not going to sew it. And we're going to grab our outer bag once we're finished with this. Place this off to the side. Woohoo, here it comes. All right, so we're using this pink fabric that does not have a definitive right or wrong side, so it doesn't really matter. But what I will say is the dots are on the outside here, so we're gonna leave the dots. So when we sew, they're gonna get tucked onto the inside, okay? And we're gonna pin the same way, except where the dots are, okay, Anna? So I'm gonna have you pin your side over here. Okay. I'm gonna pin this side over here. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to pin our dots. Okay. So remember, we want like the plastic ball head mm -hmm. of the pin to stick out from the fabric. We need about two, two or three pins, give or take. Great. And you can see we've gone through both layers of our fabric. Now, when we come down to the dots over here, we're going to have the ball head points of our pins facing into the fabric. So I'm just gonna do the same pinch. You see how now that's going in when these are all going out? And that's just gonna show us that there's a difference in what they mean. So 
Our pieces are pinned for our bags and now we're going to go ahead and get ready to sew them. Step 10, sewing your bag pieces. It's all come down to this moment, Anna. <laughs> we are going to take our outer bag piece mm -hmm. and we're going to put it under our presser foot here. I'm just going to lift up our needle a little bit. So we're going to start on the right hand side of our bag because okay. what we want to do is the travel path is down the side. We're going to pivot like we did with our practice sheets. We're going to come to the next corner, pivot, and come back up to the top and stop because we need to leave it open so we have a bag, right? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up with our seam guide, our half inch seam allowances here. Are we looking pretty straight on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you start sewing, we're going to come forward, we're going to do a quick back stitch, and then we're ready to sew, okay? All right, whenever you're ready, go for it. Oh, I forgot. Your pins are like stop signs. So when you get to a pin, stop right before you're about to run it over. Like take your foot off the pedal and actually stop and take the pin out and put it back in your pin cushion. Okay? You got it? Mm -hmm. All right, on your marks, get set. Go. Go. <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. So you can see Anna has made it to the corner. So we're going to get ready to do our pivot that we've been practicing. So Anna, I'm going to make sure your needle is in the fabric so that when you lift up your presser foot lever, when we swing it, it's not going to go anywhere. So stay put. And you are now ready to come down the next side of your... Okay. Just remember to take out your pins. Okay? <laughs> So it's really a good practice, like when your presser foot gets to right about the edge of your fabric, that's a good stopping point. So our needle is actually already down in the fabric, so you can lift up your presser foot lever, swing it on over, put your presser foot down, and we're going to continue right back up this edge. Coming down to home plate, Anna. Okay, so lift up your presser foot. We're going to pull this out so the thread touches the back of the table so it's not too short. Anna's going to turn off her machine. We're going to snip this. Ooh, I always like to do a couple little things here. We're going to just put our hand in just to make sure there's no holes. So we have to make sure both layers are actually caught when we we're sewing them up. And we're going to go ahead. This is also a really good best practice. Just take your scissors and snip the extra threads. That way you can get rid of them and you don't end up at the end with lots of snipping to do. All right, Anna, you ready to do your lining? Yep. Okay, we're gonna bring our lining over. It's all pinned up, but this is gonna be a little different. This time, our path is start on the right-hand side. We're gonna go down. What's gonna happen at the corner? We're going to pivot. We're going to pivot. Now this time, remember how we pin this in a different direction? Mm -hmm. We're going to stop at this pin because that's where our dots are. Okay? Okay. We're going to back stitch there and completely stop. Okay. We're going to disconnect the thread. So we're going to cut the thread. Mm -hmm. We're going to jump over, okay. come to the other dot, and continue our little journey right back up to the other side of the bag. Okay. Still leaving the top open so we can put things inside of our bag. Okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, Anna set up under the presser foot. Her needle, put your, I'm just gonna have you turn the wheel so the needle's into the fabric. Just make sure we're starting off at the right place and then bring it all the way down. There you go. And you are ready to roll. Okay. Make sure that needle is down. Yep, there you go. And lift and swing. And remember, we're going to stop at that pin. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to lift up the presser foot and pull it out. Make sure it touches the table. 
snip our threads. Remember what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. We're going to jump to the other dot. Yep. Here we go. We can take that pin out and we're going to just make sure the presser foot is lined up um, on our seam guide. Put our needle down. Yeah, and it looks like it's right in the dot there. And you're going to go right to the corner and continue, continue along. Make sure your needle's down. Great. Okay. And swing and put your press over it. Beautiful. And let's take it home. All right, Anna has completed the lining of her bag. And what's gonna be different from the outer bag is when you put your hand in here to check if there's a hole, guess what? There is a hole and that's supposed to be there because that's gonna allow us to do a magical trick to make sure our bag turns all in the right direction, okay? So this hole's good, but if there are others, we might wanna fix them. Step 11 preparing your strap, Anna. So this is what's gonna allow our bag to actually be wearable. And we already have our strap piece here on top of a towel. So if you have an ironing board at home, I recommend you using an ironing board. For our purposes, since we're here at this table to show you, we've actually taken you know a pretty standard towel, terry cloth towel, something you might use at the beach, it's totally fine. Cotton is usually the best, so nothing um, gets burned. You're going to have your iron plugged in and you want to make sure it's on the correct setting for your fabric. Our fabric's a cotton, so we have it on the cotton setting. And we're going to fold the strap mainly to get rid of kind of these funny edges along the sides. That's our cut edge. So you can see ours is fraying a little bit. So Anna, what we're going to do is first we want to remove our piece of tape. We can just kind of put it off to the side. I think we all know what the strap piece is now that long and skinny piece of fabric. And we're gonna unfold it. And when we unfolded it, it is much longer, which is great, so that way you can wear it. It also, when we unfold it, we're looking at the wrong side of the fabric, which is fine. We actually want the wrong side of the fabric facing up instead of the right side of the fabric. If it doesn't matter for your fabric that you're using, then that's fine. But we are on the wrong side of the fabric and it's laying out flat. So what we're gonna do first, and all the kids apparently are calling this the hot dog fold. I learned something new recently, and when you make a fold, a hot dog fold if you will, you are gonna take your cut edges and match your cut edges along the long length of your strap. So it's long and skinny, like a hot dog. So right now it's not particularly staying well, so the iron's gonna help us to set it. So sometimes if you'd like, you can give it a crease like if you're folding fabric, and if you don't have an iron, you can do that. It just takes a little more practice and patience to really try to get that crease without an iron. All right, so our iron is pretty much ready to go, and we're going to press our strap. And Anna, I'm gonna have you help me with that. Anna, you're a righty, right? Okay. All right, so Anna's gonna go ahead and just kind of what we're gonna do is press it, like we talked about in the beginning, where you just kinda of lift it up and bring it down. Sometimes dragging the iron can create like bumps and lumps and offset, make it difficult for the fabric to stay where you want it to be. Okay. Excellent, so go ahead and bring your iron back. So now when we open this up, you'll see a crease has been made down the middle, okay? So that is really to give us an idea of where we want to take our cut edge and fold it into, okay? So our next step, we're going to start in the end over here. I'm going to have you grab the iron, and we're going to take the cut edge and fold it into that crease, just right about that crease. Go ahead and do one edge at a time. It doesn't really matter which edge you use first, you just want to do one at a time. Boom! Our first fold. Nice job. So we're going to take the other side and do the exact same thing. 
Okay, so we have our two folds, our two inward folds, and we're going to come back to that original fold of the middle, and all those cut edges are going to be tucked inside by doing a fold, matching up our folded edges. Okay. Voila! So Anna has created this really nice folded strap, no cut edges showing. However, the iron's great, but it doesn't really stick all of our fabric together. So what do you think we need to do to actually make this stay together? Sew it. You got it. We're going to sew it. So to kind of hold everything together, we're going to grab our pins real quick. And we're going to just stick a couple of pins along the way, just so it holds it. Just enough, okay? There you go, Anna. We're going to come all the way to the end. Step 12, sewing your strap. Anna did a really excellent job ironing all our folds for our strap so that all the cut edges are tucked in. So to hold everything together, we are going to run this through on the sewing machine. It's going to be a little different than how we sewed our bags together. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it under our presser foot. But instead of matching it up to our seam guide, our piece of tape that we've been using, we're going to use the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the fabric. So what that's going to look like is this right here. If you don't want your tape on there, if you think that's going to confuse you, you know, go ahead, peel that off, move it off to the side, and you can easily put it back when you're done. All right, so Anna. This uh, other part of the step is that it's going to be top stitched. So top stitching is when we sew on the outside of our fabric, so you're going to see this. All right? And that, some people might get a little, like, hung up on the color of their thread so that it matches. Again, we're going to keep the red thread so that you can see it. And when we're finished sewing our bag, you are going to see that red thread. Okay? So it's important to just kind of stay on the right path and go as straight as you possibly can. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> All right, Miss Anna, you can go ahead and start sewing. And stuff. Perfect. And lift it up. And we'll match the back of the table and grab our scissors. Turn our machine off. All right. You went in for the long drive over here down the strap road and we're going to check to make sure both sides have been captured, meaning if the fold wasn't completely sewn in, it might look like it's coming undone. So, Anna, you did an, ex like, an extraordinarily fabulous job. This looks great. So why don't we go ahead and get rid of that extra thread, put it in my thread pocket. All right. So voila. Anna has made herself her Remy bag strap. And we're ready to move on to the next step. Step 13, sewing the strap to the outer bag. Anna did a fabulous job sewing our strap together. And we also have our outer bag fabric over here. And what we need to do is attach these two pieces together so that we can actually put it into the lining eventually. That will be coming in just a few steps. So Anna, what I'm going to have you do is we are going to flip this bag to the good side. That means we want to see the right side facing out, just like you are going to flip your clothing from being inside out. So I'm going to have you go ahead and do that. And we can see that our cut edges are now being hidden inside. And Anna's going to go ahead and poke out the corners, but sometimes it's tricky with your fingers, they're not as pointy. So if you wanna use like a pen or your scissor, just gently kind of pushing it into the corners helps to make your bag look more square. Yeah, so our bag's looking really nice and square. That means our seam allowance is pretty much spot on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our strap now, and we're gonna go ahead and attach it kind of looping underneath our bag, which seems weird, but it's a part of the magic. And putting this all together so trust in the sewing lady I promise you it's gonna turn out fine so I'm gonna have you go ahead Anna and hold the cut end of your uh, strap the short side and we're gonna line it up with the side seam 
It doesn't really which side you start with. You just want to make sure when we are attaching it, it's not twisted. So Anna, I'm going to take that from you and I'm going to have you grab the pins. We're going to line it up with our side seam. So if you guys look over here, here's our side seam. Here's the top of our strap. I'm just kind of placing it right there. You guys see that? And I'm going to borrow a pin from you. And we're just going to push that pin down and back out so it's attached to all of our layers together. And the trick to making sure this is correct is to make sure when you bring your strap to the other side, it's not twisted. So we look pretty straight. And we're going to go ahead and match up the cut edges on the other side seam. And Anna is already prepared and knows we need a pin. We're going to pin that in place. You can see cut edges matched up, pin in place, went through all the layers. And now our strap is placed in the correct spot to our outer bag. All right, Anna, I'm going to have you bring over the sewing machine and we're going to get ready to machine base the strap to the bag. And what that's going to do is allow us to remove the pin, but create a temporary way of stitching it onto the bag. So it's not really going to hold our bag together. It's just going to keep it in place so that we don't have to sew through pins when we get to putting our lining in our bag. So Anna has our sewing machine. It is set up to all the same stitches, straight stitch. However, we do need to change our stitch length. If you remember, we were on 2.5. So Anna, I'm going to have you turn the dial to 4. That means we're going to have a much longer stitch because we don't need it to be as tight to hold it all together. The other thing I'll mention, because our bag is circular, I don't know if you guys can see that, it goes in the round. Sometimes it's helpful to pull out the bottom compartment so that you can place the bag around the arm of the sewing machine. So you can see that it's in place right there. We're going to line it up under the presser foot and Anna's going to put the presser foot right against the edge of the fabric. So we're not going to worry about our seam allowance again, the same seam allowance that we were using before. The presser foot is going to be our seam guide to create our seam allowance. So, and I'm going to just have you pull the pin out and we're going to put the needle down into the fabric. There you go. And we're really just going to do this short little stitch just to attach it right to the end here. Okay? So you go ahead. You don't even need to worry about a back stitch. And stop. Perfect. So lift up the presser foot lever, pull up the needle, we'll keep our same length on the thread. We're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side. Press our foot edge right against the cut edge of the bag and the strap. Alright Anna, you can go ahead and run that quick little stitch and stop. Great. And take that all up. Anna has now machine basted her strap so it is attached without a, any pins but it's not really going to hold anything so we're going to go ahead and talk about how we're going to attach the lining, the strap, and the bag all together. All right? All right. Step 14, preparing your bag to be sewn. Okay, Miss Anna, we have our outer bag and our lining bag out on the table. This is where they're going to start to connect with one another. We're going to leave our outer bag with the right sides facing out and we're going to leave our lining bag with the wrong side facing out so you can still see the stitching. Now, we are going to put the outer bag into the lining bag. So actually right sides of the two bags are going to be facing one another. Okay. So Anna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this open and I actually want you to put the outer bag into here. So we're going to just collect the strap. The strap is going to go in here. Oh, like a little magic trick. We're going to not pull a rabbit out though. Got to kind of squeeze it in there. It looks a little discombobulated, a little confusing. But once we start to wiggle it down, sometimes shaking it helps a little bit. And the goal 
of putting this together is to match edges, okay? Just think about a puzzle. We're gonna match our cut edges. So our side seams over here, there's our side seams of our lining and of our outer bag. And you can see the strap is now sandwiched in the middle. Okay, so the two nice sides are facing one another. We're gonna come over to the other side of our bag and make sure the strap and the lining and the outer bags are matched up at the side seam on the other side. And then the cut edges of the tops of the bags need to match up. So you can see these two cut edges all the way around in the full circle. To hold it all in place, what do you think we need to do? Pin it. You got it. So I always like to start with our side seams first, just because that's a really good way to mark where they need to be. So we're going to go ahead and put the pin at the side seam here. And then we're going to pin all the way around the top of our bag. It's going to look a little bit like a porcupine. Porcupine. Yes. Just the, well, if our, our pins, the pointy edges are at least pointing straight down. All right, we're going to come to the side seam. Doo, doo, doo. Side seam. We're going to place the pin at the side seam. Everything's matching up. And this is why seam allowances are really important. When you are not keeping to your seam allowance, your side seams might not match up and your bags might not fit into one another. But Anna did a really nice job and everything is fitting just fine. The top of our bag, you guys can see, is all pinned together. And you might be able to guess, you probably don't want a bag full of pins, so we are going to sew it all together. Okay? Step 15, sewing the bags together. All of our fabric pieces that we cut out from the very beginning are now pinned up in our bag here and we are actually going to just stitch through all these layers. So Anna's over here at the machine again and we are going to go ahead and put our seam allowance back. We're going to use our half inch seam allowance and Anna's going to put her piece of tape onto our plate over here. Great, so Anna set up our seam allowance and we still have our storage compartment not on our machine so the arm is free all the way around our machine. That way we can sew our bag in a circle, if you will. And the way I'm going to set this up is we're going to start on the side seam. It doesn't really matter which side seam you start on, it just pick one and start with it. So we're going to go ahead and put this underneath your presser foot, match it up, the cut edges to your seam guide, your half inch seam guide, and we're going to put your presser foot down. And we are going to take that pin out just to get us started. I'm going to have you hand me the pin cushion and I will help collect pins. And Anna, you're just going to go all the way around, full circle, back to the beginning from where you started, okay? So just make sure everything's nice and even and take your time and go. So we just split the side seam over here just to make sure when Anna goes over it, it, it doesn't bunch up. So now it's just laying flat. It's just kind of like spread, like spread wings and Anna's going to go right over the other side seam. So Anna has now made it back to the beginning. She's going to do a back stitch here since she didn't do it in the beginning. It's your choice since we are going back to the beginning. You can just save your back stitch for the end if you forget to do it in the beginning or do it in the beginning and the end. Okay, so go ahead and back stitch. And stop. Great. We're going to go ahead and lift that up, pull it out, and cut it. I'll make sure I thread touch in the back. And turn your machine off. You're going to do a couple little clips of thread just to get rid of it. Keep it nice and neat. And we are going to get ready to flip this to the good side. Step 16, turning your bag. Anna has her bag all sewn together. It doesn't look like much of a bag yet. But again, this is this is what we've been this is what we've been building up the entire time. 
okay? So if your tape is on the inside lining, I'm gonna have Anna take the tape off here now. However, some might have the tape on the right side of the fabric and that's when you'll take it off, okay? But we'll take it off so it's not on the inside. Great. And Anna is going to reach into this opening that we left, if you remember, when we were sewing our lining fabric together. She's gonna reach in and start to pull out the fabric on the inside. This is really important to do it slowly. You don't want to rip your stitches. And your strap is going to come out. Your lining is going to flip through. It's better than a rabbit. Oh. All right, Anna has done it. The lining is on the good side. The outer bag is on the right side. All we need to do is just kind of make sure our corners and everything is just laying in the correct way. So we can go ahead and find our opening, poke those corners out, make sure there's no holes around the top of our bag. Okay. Strap looks good. It's not twisted. Looks like we have an A plus job over here. Everything is ready now to get tucked in and to be sewn together. Okay. So that hole we purposely jumped over when we were sewing our lining actually needs to be sewn shut. So what we're going to do is just come down to the bottom here and you can see the opening. The cut edges actually kind of tuck in naturally just because of the way we sewed it. So you'll see when I pull it kind of tight, you don't see any of those cut edges. But what we want to do is make sure that it stays tucked in by sewing it on the sewing machine. And what we're gonna have Anna do, we're gonna grab a couple of pins. I like to start about maybe almost an inch on the outside of the opening. We're gonna stick some pins in there just to hold it in place. And put one right in the middle. Just also for you to mark where you wanna be sewing. And maybe one more on the out, outside right here. Excellent. So Anna's going to go ahead and we're going to get our machine back over here and we're going to sew the lining shut, okay? Alright, Anna has the sewing machine back over here. There's a couple little things we need to do to make sure it's ready for us to sew the lining shut. If you remember, we were on the stitch length of 4. We want to turn it back to the 2.5 since we are not machine basting. And we are also not going to use the, ha um, the half inch seam allowance on our seam guide. We are going to use the presser foot on the edge of the fabric. So Anna, I'm going to have you go ahead and place this under the presser foot. Match up your edges right at about the pin here. You can put the presser foot down. I'm going to remove the pin. And you're going to just go ahead and do a back stitch in the beginning and come right down to about this pin and do a back stitch at the end. All right, Anna made it to the end of the opening. It's now closed, so just make sure. Always give it a little check. If any piece of the fabric seems to be popping out, then you can re-stitch it, maybe have the seam rip. But everything's looking pretty solid here. Anna, are you ready to finish this up? <laughs> Step 18, finishing your bag. <laughs> you did it, Anna. This is the last step to really make sure it's ready to go, all right? The deal is, let's check on a couple of things. First, we wanna remove any tape. So we already took our lining tape off of our bag. It looks like we still have our outer bag tape. And we removed our strap tape earlier. Great. Also inspect it for any extra threads hanging out did a good job kind of keeping up with it. That's why it's a good idea to always keep up with your threads. And no holes. So we're going to tuck the lining into the outer bag. So we're gonna just kind of pull this out. Go ahead and push that pink part of the bag right down into the outer. And let's see. 
Everything's fitting really well. Sometimes it's a good idea to get your finger or a pen or your scissors just to kind of match up everything to the corners. I always like to give it a little tug just to let everything lay flat. If it's really wrinkly, you can go ahead and press it with your iron. And guess what? It's time. Anna, show it off to the world. You've completed, wait, stay right here. You can just hold it up right over here. You have completed your very own Remy bag. <laughs> now ready to go shopping? <laughs> all right. Well, guys, I want to thank you all so much for joining us while we have been sewing through many steps to get to this point. You guys did an amazing job, and we're excited that you made it to the very end. So if you want to share what you've done, we would love to see your hard work. We have lots of social media websites that we can have you tag up your projects. We have Instagram at The Handwork Studio. We're on Facebook at The Handwork Studio. And we'll have um, uh, websites with our information and projects that we'll be sharing up as well. And if you have any questions, like we said in the beginning, email us, support at thehandworkstudio.com. And I hope you come back and join us for another project. Thanks. <laughs>